Hi everyone, we are back with a desimplified pathway. And in this one, we're going to talk about uh, the hormones and how they react from the hypothalamus to the pituitary to the ovary specifically, and the production of estrogen and how estrogens are regulated, at least in terms of this axis. There are much more regulatory steps in estrogen production, uh, but this is just one pathway uh, that regulates secretion of estrogens. And so we have our same axis up here. And just like in the simplified video, we're going to start off in our hypothalamus. And I'm not going to draw a lot of pictures today because I think it, this is going to be best communicated just with words and with a diagram. So we have our hypothalamus that is going to secrete GnRH. And if you do not remember what GnRH is, then I suggest you go back and watch the simplified video. Um, so GnRH is going to then act on the anterior pituitary gland, which is going to secrete FSH and LH. And then this is where I'm going to get a little bit more into the nuance of the pathway. Um, so FSH is going to act on a type of cells called granulosa cells, and these are in the ovary. Granulosa cells. And the granulosa cells are going to be triggered by FSH specifically to secrete three different molecules. The first one is inhibin, which I'll get into in a minute. Progesterone. And estradiol, specifically estradiol. And then LH is going to act on a type of cells called theca cells, which are also in the ovary. And theca cells are responsible for producing a molecule called androstene dione. And androstene dione is a weak form of testosterone. Which is converted uh, via aromatase. So if you remember our aromatase pathway, it's converted uh, by aromatase to estrone, which is a weak form of estrogen. And then estrone is converted to estradiol. And likewise, estradiol can also be converted back into estrone, although that's not super important for this video. I will put that aromatase, if you can read my handwriting. Uh, so theca cells produce androstene dione, androstene dione converted by aromatase to estrone, which can be converted to estradiol and back to estrone. Um, that isn't super, super important, but I think it's pretty cool that we have androstene dione that can become estrogen. Um, and this buildup of androstene dione will also factor into the regulation of estradiol secretion. Um, so we have in this pathway, just like we had in the previous pathway, we have negative feedback on the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary. Uh, but in the last video, I did overly simplify the pathway uh, because it's not so simple as that they just go back and inhibit stuff. They each of these hormones actually inhibits at specific places in the pathway. And so inhibin specifically is secreted along with uh, estradiol and progesterone to specifically act on FSH. And so inhibin only inhibits FSH production. And then progesterone and estradiol are both going to inhibit at the hypothalamus and at the anterior pituitary. So we get inhibition 
of both of these. So if we have GnRH secreted from the hypothalamus, uh, which goes to the anterior pituitary, secreting FAS FSH and LH, um, which triggers the granulosa cells to produce inhibin, inhibin inhibits FSH, progesterone and estradiol inhibit the hypothalamus to decrease GnRH and decrease FSH and LH at the anterior pituitary. And this happens for most of the menstrual cycle, because most of the time we do not want incredibly high amounts of estrogen or progesterone. Um, but there are times where we do want to stimulate production of FSH and LH, specifically LH, um, and trigger this cascade to increase. And so you find a good green here for part of the cycle, estradiol is actually going to stimulate production of GnRH at the hypothalamus and stimulate production at the pituitary, specifically LH, because LH is responsible uh, in the process of ovulation. You get a huge surge in LH, and that is what is going to trigger ovulation. And this happens at days 12 through 14. And so that is the only case really, um, apart from, I'm not going to go into pregnancy, pregnancy is complicated, but from days 12 to 14 of the cycle, you are going to have an increase in estradiol that is then going to cause an increase in GnRH and LH. Um, but for most of the cycle, let me summarize what we have. I'm going to once again kind of ignore this side over here. But most of the cycle, we have the hypothalamus, uh, which is going to increase GnRH, uh, goes to the anterior pituitary, which is going to stimulate release of FSH and LH. Uh, LH is going to trigger the theca cells to produce androstenedione, dione, which is converted by aromatase to estrone. Estrone is converted to estradiol. Um, the granulosa cells triggered by FSH to secrete inhibin, progesterone, and estradiol. Increased amounts of inhibin are going to come back and cause a decrease in FSH and a decrease in LH. Uh, but then also progesterone and estradiol, as this pathway uh, gets increased and increased, the more GnRH, the more FSH, more LH is going to cause lots and lots of estradiol, lots and lots of progesterone, and these are going to tell the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary, stop, stop, we don't want any more, and it's going to then cause a decrease in GnRH as well, and further decrease in FSH and LH. So this is a bit more complicated of a pathway, especially uh, with this particular set of hormones because we do have our ovulatory cycle in here, um, but I hope this uh, was entertaining and curiosity sparking for you all. Next video, I'm going to talk about the cycle of regulating androgens and what happens at the testes. And so if you have any um, questions, comments, debates, please put those in the comments below. Also, please give me a like. Uh, also hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and I will see you all in the next one.